Would you please stand up, superhero, and stand up to say the pledges with us? American flag. Salute pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Christian flag. Blue pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Bible pledge. Salute pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will put its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Thy word is a light on my feet. Thy word is a light on to my path. I will hide thy word inside my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thy word is a light unto my feet. Thy word is a light unto my path. I will hide thy word inside my heart. Hi everyone, thank you for coming. Would you be a superhero and bow your head for a word of prayer? Let's pray. Thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you made. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for the rain that helps the flowers grow and, and help our friends and amen. amen. Again, thank you for coming. Please be seated. Please be seated. Well, welcome. I'm Mrs. Henderson, and in my opinion, we could stop here, be finished, and be pleased. I am so happy with that. So tonight, we are going to be doing a play that I wrote in 2017. 
maybe I sleep here like Adam found my Bible. Adam is my super, so the name all the animals. Animals like the eye eye, the dumbo octopus, the neck and mower. That's a strange looking animal. I want to be a superhero like Eve from the Bible. Eve is my superhero because she was a strong mother that took her children to church. She asked God for forgiveness when she made mistakes, and she liked to take care of the animals, too. Genesis, Genesis 1, 27 and 28. And so God created man and his own I want to be a super. I want to be a superhero like Noah from the Bible. Noah is my superhero because he liked the buildings, and God commanded Noah to bring children of every animal, male and female, into the ark. And my name is Noah too. Noah fun. How cool is that? I want to be a superhero like Noah's wife from the Bible, Nama. Nama is my superhero because she helped take care of the animals. And after the flood, God placed a beautiful rainbow in the sky, promising Nama never to flood the earth again. And I like rainbows too. Yeah. 
and name I knew that Jesus is God, and that Jesus is a superhero that would save the world. Don't you know what God gave plans for a building of a boat? So one rain came on his family, and the animals could float. to be a superhero like Joseph from the Old Testament of the Bible. Joseph is my superhero because he was a gentle and thoughtful man. God gave him a special gift to know the meaning of dreams. Genesis 39.2 And the Lord was with Joseph. He was a 
prosperous man. Joseph knew that Jesus is God and that Jesus is the superhero that would save the world. I am so glad that my Father in heaven shows of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me and me. I, oh. I want to be a superhero like Moses from the Bible. Moses is my superhero because he led a mighty nation from a long time of captivity. He faced the deep red sea and he crossed on dry land. Exodus 3, 4, God called unto him out of the midst of a bus and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. Moses knew that Jesus is God and that Jesus is the superhero that would save the world. Moses led a mighty nation from a long captivity. God prepared a way before him set his crown for all to see. Man of Pharaoh from the heavens, shall he glow continually. Then he faced the deep red sea. How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did he get across? Did he swim? No, no. Did he walk? No, no. Did he run? No, 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 no. Did he walk? Did he run? No, no. How did he get across? A blue wind has went puff, 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 puff. He blew just enough, the, 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 and through the sea, God made a path. That's how he got across. I want to be a superhero like Ruth from the Bible. Ruth is my superhero because she was kind and caring to her mother-in-law. She was the great-grandmother to King David. Ruth 1, 16, and Ruth said, And treat me not to leave thee or to return for following after thee. For whether thou goes, I will go. Whether thou lodge, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Ruth knew that Jesus is God, and that Jesus is a superhero that would save the world. When he cometh, when he cometh to make up his jewels, all his jewels, precious jewels, his love and his own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright frown adorning, they shall shine. 
going to be a superhero, David from the Bible. David is my superhero because he could have fit a giant. I want to be a superhero like Abigail from the Bible. Abigail is my superhero because she reminded David, even as a young child, he could defeat a giant. For Samuel 17, 47, David said, And all the assembly shall know, As the Lord saveth not, with sword or a spear. The battle is the Lord, and he could give you into our hands. David and Abigail knew that Jesus is God, and that Jesus is the superhero that will save the world. Swing. Only a boy named David, but he could play and sing. Only a boy named David, only a rippling brook. Only a boy named David, but fiery stones he took. to be a superhero like Deborah from the Bible. Deborah is my superhero because she decided worship of God, Judges 5, 1 and 2. Then sing Deborah. I even will sing unto the O God of Israel. Deborah knew that Jesus is God and that Jesus is the superhero and will save the world. My God is so great, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the sun are his, and he works too. My God is so great, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. God is so to be a soup here while Joseph found the Bible. Joseph is my soup here because he listened to God. I want to be a superhero like Mary from the Bible. Mary is my superhero because she was the mother of God. It was a miracle. God, God the, the Father, Father God, God the Son, God, God the Holy Spirit, Spirit pray and what? Joseph and Mary know that Jesus is God and that Jesus is the superhero that was sent from heaven to save the world. One day, One day he is coming back. Which day will it be?
day of the week. Yes, yes, O m a n a day of the week. Yes, yes, O m a n a wilderness, wilderness, marvelous, marvelous, miracles. Peter and my superhero, aka Peter, was there when Jesus did miracle. Peter knew that Jesus is God, that Jesus is the superhero that died and rose to save the world. To be a superhero like Paul from the Bible. Paul is my superhero because he was the first missionary. Paul, Silas, and Lydia knew that Jesus is God and that Jesus is the superhero that was born. And lived a perfect life, died and rose again for our sins. John 3, 1 through 17. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know.
down to thee. Be born again. Wind blow it.
Lake, Lake. Someday. Grayson and my superhero is Cyrus, Iron Man, and my my sh my name is Kelly, and my shoe was David. Jackson and my super was Adam. My name is Sydney and my superhero was Eve. Um, my name is Alexander and my story was Peter. My name is Claire and my superhero was Nema. My name is Noah, and my superhero was Noah. <laughs> my name is Juliet, and my superhero was Abigail. My name is Lulu, and my superhero was Zara. My name is Noah, and my superhero is Joseph. My name is Samantha. My superhero is Mary. My name is Lucas, and my superhero was Paul. My name is Anna, and my superhero is Dedida. My name is Judah, and my superhero was Moses. My name is Luke, and my superhero was Joseph from the Old Testament of the Bible. My name is Bridget, and my superhero was Sarah. My name is Sassy, and my superhero is Abraham.
parents, grandparents, guests, thank you again for being here today. I'm Mr. Karachuk, the administrator, and while they're changing for just a moment, uh, I want to commend you. I want to commend you for your choice for placing your child in Mrs. Henderson's class. You know, I've known Mrs. Henderson for many years. For the 15 years that I've been here, I've known her and worked with her, and I've certainly known her dedication, her commitment, her faithfulness to the Lord, and her love for your children. And so I commend you for placing your child in her class because I know the type of person she is and I know the desire that she has for your child to grow and to know and love the Lord. You know, kindergarten is in many ways a foundation. It's a foundation for future learning and it's a foundation spiritually. And you and Mrs. Henderson have really laid a good foundation academically and spiritually. But you know, the foundation is really just the beginning. A, a solid foundation is certainly essential. We know that if you're making a building, the foundation is key if your building's gonna stand. But we also know that the foundation isn't all there is. We don't stop with the foundation and congratulate ourselves that we've done all we can. We don't look at the foundation and say, well, I guess that'll be it for the, for the whole time. We don't be, stop when we have the base, we continue. And you know, when constructing a building, while we want that solid foundation, we also have to pay attention to the other materials we use to continue building. You know, if you were building a house, and you know, maybe some of you recently have had a house built, and you hired a contractor, or maybe you acted as your own contractor, you don't look for whatever's lying around. Well, there's a scrap this, there's a scrap that. And I doubt you say to the contractor, you know what, just get the cheapest of everything, I don't care. What you do is you buy the best you can afford. It might not be the same as what someone down the street has or whatever, but you get the best that you can. You want something that's gonna last. You want something that's gonna endure. You want something that's gonna provide a protection and a stable place and a place that you can live for however many years you're there. You pay attention not only to the foundation, but to all the other materials. In the Bible, Paul speaks about foundations and building. And one of those places is in 1 Corinthians 3. And the Bible says there, Paul speaking, according to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it. Because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Now Paul speaks here in this passage about the mission God gave to him, the importance and the role of the gospel. Paul talks about the fact that the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, that faith in Christ alone, the work that he did in sending his son Jesus to, to die on the cross for our sins, is the only true foundation. No other foundation can be built upon. No other foundation is solid. But he notes that there's going to be some building that happens after that. The way a believer builds his life, the way parents invest in the lives of children, the way a church continues to grow. All of that is a matter of building upon the one true foundation. And you know, he says there's, there's different kinds of building materials. Some of them are good. Gold, silver, precious stone. And some of them are not so good. Wood, hay, and straw. And believers make all sorts of choices about how they're gonna build. They make those choices in their own lives 
They make those choices in the lives of their families. And Paul warns us or encourages us to choose the good materials, the things that will continue to build a solid house that will be worthy to be built upon the foundation. So it is you've already invested, you and your families, your churches here at school, you've invested in that solid foundation. I want to encourage you through the means that God provides, through the opportunities you have, to continue to invest to build on that foundation. In your home, in your church, by the associations, perhaps here at school, so that as we build, we look not only at today, but we look at the finished product. You know how it is, again, if you're gonna remodel your kitchen, if you're gonna build a house, if you're gonna do a playroom, put on an addition, you know, the contractor, whatever comes, and shows you all these pictures of what it's gonna look like when it's done. Because that's what you wanna see. Your goal is the done, not really, stacks of pieces of wood or some granite over here, a few tiles. Oh, you get to pick those all out as part of the process. But you're looking for a finished product. As we as parents and teachers have the privilege of working with young people and children, we want to think about the finished product. What is the goal? Where is God directing us? We have a foundation, but what next? What will we continue to do? You've laid a good foundation. And by God's grace, I urge you to continue to build with the materials that will last. It's going to cost more. That's my warning. You already know that. It's going to cost in all sorts of ways. The good materials cost time. They cost energy. A lot of times they cost money. They cost. But the product, the fruit, the result is far more worth it. Tonight, let's enjoy the celebration that we have. Let's acknowledge the accomplishments of these lovely children. Let's be thankful for what they've done uh, and what God has done. And let's set our sights on continuing to build on that foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I commend you. I know in just a few minutes, they're going to come through those doors. They'll have on their caps and gowns, and we'll be able to celebrate together. As we wait, Let's just enjoy the moment and the opportunity that we have to think about what God has done and is doing. And in a moment, I'm sure Mrs. Henderson will appear and we'll be uh, at the point of giving out our diplomas and continuing our celebration. Thank you again.
Thank you very much. I hope you've really enjoyed the play. And now this portion of the ceremony is the award ceremony. So what I want to do now is to recognize some people that helped with some of the things that we did uh, in the play. Personally, I think they did a great job. We had a few hiccups, but they went right through it. So why don't we go ahead and give them a round of applause for their... Very good. Uh, first, I want to thank the teachers that have supported and their resource teachers. So I'm going to call some teachers up, and I have a little something for them. Some uh, parents took up some money, and we were able to get a little something for uh, different people. So then I'd like to have, we have a band teacher. We have Mrs. Greathouse. If she would come forward, and we have Mrs. Sandoval, who's a PE teacher. If we could get her to come forward, that would be great. Mrs. Keller, she's always busy working, so I don't know if she's actually here, but Mrs. Keller also. We just want to say a little bit thank you for PE, their most favorite time, our <laughs> PE and band. I mean, I turn... Um, on my head, upside down, doing everything, but when it's PE and band, it's like that's the best thing ever, right? So thank you, ladies, very much. And I want to um, thank someone who's been actually a, you know, friend. You know, friend. Interesting word. I use it seldom uh, because I, I, I find a, a friend is someone that you can confide in even when you're having those bad moments. But yet, somehow, you know, they still love you through it. And so I would like to thank our pianist. Her name is Mrs. Jim Forte, and we had took up a little something for her also. Um, the next person that I'd like to come up is a teacher parent, Mrs. Sandoval is too, and by the way, this is our last time, Mrs. Sandoval, yeah, so Everly's her youngest. I'd like to, uh, it is important to be encouraged. Jesus did that clear through the Bible. He was so encouraging with his words. Um, when people did things that things that other people thought were so horrible, he turned it around and said, yeah, right, you don't think you ever did anything wrong? I mean, if you don't think you did anything wrong, then go ahead and throw that stone, right? No, they couldn't. So because he was an encourager. I'd like to ask, this, this person has been an encourager to me through some ups and downs, and I'd like for Mrs. Lancaster to come forward. In a, little, in a little bit, you're going to see how beautiful the cafeteria is. Oh, it was a pain. It was, it was so hard to do. This lady here kept coming up and whispering in my ear, it's going to be beautiful. Don't worry about it. It's going to be beautiful. And I was just like, I don't think so. <laughs> no, you're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you. <clears throat> I've had the privilege to work with the next person as a peer, and then it turned he became my boss. I wasn't real sure, how does that work? When you've worked with someone as a peer, and then they become your boss, you know, how will that work? I was, I was concerned. I loved Mr. Bandy. Um, you know, I thought he was a great person. And it was, I wasn't sure. I'm here to tell you, he made it easy, and I'll tell you why. He hasn't the ability to put you at ease, 
put you at ease. And I guess I need that a lot. I need to know that it's going to be okay. It's going to be, you know, it'll be fine and work through. And so I just want to thank Mr. Kirchuk for the way he stepped in during COVID. He led everything, and we were open and in person. And look at us now. And so I really appreciate him. I've made you a pretty certificate. You got to come back up and get it. It's really pretty. Yeah, I forgot your certificate. Oh, we can clap. <laughs> All right. Uh, these two ladies, uh, Mrs. Lepla came to know that, hey, I can give these two ladies a call and they'll be here in a moment. Not just for my class. They would come for other things, you know, photographs, so, you know, anything like that. And they would, they would come. And she would come to me, do you think they'll come? And I said, give them a call. They'll come. And they would. So I would like for Mrs. Jones to come forward. And there are times in life when you just have to go and do what is right. And this lady has been a blessing to me and now a blessing to our school. And we're, I just wanted to personally tell her thank you. And the next person I know, I know personally, she's a very sweet person, and she's also my daughter-in-law, which makes it interesting. But she, Mrs. Lepla really didn't know that, right? So she would like, Henderson, like, you, are you guys related or something? I'm like, Nolan Kellen? Henderson? <gasps> no. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's their mom. Yes, we're, we're related. <laughs> and so she was one of those moms that the school, the school could call and would help out. I'm going to ask her to come forward. I know she doesn't like that. I won't keep her up here long. I don't want to embarrass you. All right. And you guys are like, really? But I think you should, you need to see that, um, and every one of these people that I've brought up here, we at one point, with me, it's going to happen. We've had some kind of fuss in our relationship. But relationships are not about that. Relationships are about moving forward. What, what am I supposed to learn through this? Because, you know, when you have a lot to do, and everyone has a lot to do, everyone can get grumpy, and that can happen. So I just want to thank all of them. Thank you for allowing me to share that with you. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the children. Now what I would like for tonight, when I call your child's name, I would like for you to stand as I speak to you about your child. All right? And she just sat down too. The first one on my list <laughs> is Autumn Shelton. And Autumn, you'll come to me. You're going to come to me, and Mommy's going to stand right where she's at, and Autumn's going to walk up to me. You'll notice that she is wearing an honor roll uh, medallion and a citizenship medallion. Those are her honors here. She is uh, on the pastor's honor roll. I have given her the Phonics Award, and she's ending the year with a 99.65%. Nolan Henderson, and we have his parents stand. And up here, Mr. Nolan, you can tell he likes his tassel, right? Not. All right. Nolan? I'm giving him, he uh, has the, an aptitude for languages. 
and Mrs. Keller loved him in Spanish class. He, would, he has a very good memory and he retains information. So he has the Spanish award. He's on the pastor's honor roll, citizenship, ending the year with a 99.7%. Judah, Barclay, and family, please stand. Judah Barclay is also wearing citizenship. And are you guys, maybe I should move this on this side here, over here. Is that better? Judah, Judah Barclay is ending the year. He has the citizenship. He has the honor roll. He's on the pastor's honor roll, which is our highest honor roll. And he's ending the year with a 99.66%. <laughs> Juliet Lepper. Hi, Juliet and her parents. Juliet, I have given her the Penmanship Award. She's on the Pastor's Honor Roll, Citizenship Honor Roll, and ending the year with a 99.66%. And the reason I have parents stand, because this is not just me. You work towards this, and that's your honor as well as theirs. Alexander Ramsey and his parents. Alexander Ramsey has a talent for math. I, I don't know. It was just quite amazing. It was almost like I can verbalize the concept, and he retained it. Or maybe I didn't teach him anything and he just knew it all. I'm not real sure. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know which, I don't know what it was. But anyway, he has, I, he has the math award, pastor's honor roll, citizenship, and a 99.91%. <laughs> Jackson Jones, where are you at? Come on up, Jackson. And his parents? Here's another one. I am also giving him the math award. Um, however, he likes to work through it. He likes to have those manipulatives, but once he gets it, he has it, and he catches on so quickly with those math concepts. He's on the pastor's honor roll. He has the citizenship honor roll, and he's ending the year with a 99.83%. <laughs> Luke Reed. Luke Reed. Aren't they doing great with these medallions? I just knew they would. I just knew. And when are, they'll never wear them except for tonight, right? Yeah. So uh, I am giving him the science award. We, go th we work through a curriculum called God's World and his science award. He's a pastor's honor roll. Citizenship honor roll and ending the year with a 99.45%. And then Lolu Omusoto. Here she comes. Uh, you actually brought this to my attention, and then I started noticing it. But I have given her the Art Award. She's on the Pastor's Honor Roll. She has the Citizenship Honor Roll uh, Award, and she is ending the year with a 99.7%, and you should see some of her characters. They're really, they're really kind of awesome. I hope next year, Fine Arts, we'll get some of those in there. <laughs> Just be looking for that form. It'll go home, and there's an art section, and I'll get a hold of you. <clears throat> yeah, a little bit of a commercial there. Lucas Brewer. <clears throat> Come on up. Oh, there's your mommy. And there's dad back there with the baby. Um, I have chosen, it's called, it's a grammar award, but I called it storytelling and using his words to edify others. He would come into the classroom and why? Whoever it is, you look beautiful today. You smell nice today, all the time. He would find things to tell, and I said, wait a second, is your dad teaching you this stuff? I mean, 
how does that? <laughs> and he said, no. He said, I just know to do it. So, uh, nothing, no, he wasn't like saying you weren't doing it. It's just that we were talking about it, right? Yeah. Uh, Pastors on roll, citizenship award, and ended the year with a 99.65. Yeah, either way. Everly Sandoval. Hey. All right. You've seen her perform tonight. She did a wonderful job even after she had a little bit of a you know, something with those beautiful white shoes. I have chosen to give her most likely to be a teacher, and I think she earned it this night. She got up and she moved on. She's ending the year with the Pastor's Honor Roll, Citizenship Award, and a 99.83%. Bridget Lancaster. All right, Bridget, I have given most likely to be a nurse because of her very caring and attentive detail to others' needs. She has a sense about her and she can tell. And uh, she's on the Pastor's Honor Roll, Citizenship Award, and ending the year with a 99.83%. Helen Henderson. And they are twins, for anyone wondering. They are twins. All right. Kellen, I have chosen most likely to be president. This is a leadership award. Pastor's Honor Roll, Citizenship Award, ending the year with a 99.66%. Noah Flood. Noah Flood, there he is. I have chosen Noah most likely to be a missionary or a pastor. He has a servant's heart, uh, very respectful. Uh, I believe he won respect for the month of May the, for um, the class. And he's Pastor's Honor Roll, Citizenship Award, ending the year with a 99.66%. Congratulations. <laughs> Grayson McQuinn. Grayson McQuinn. I don't think you're going to be surprised when I announce the award. Engineering award. He loves, uh, you knew it, yes. He loves to build. He loves STEM time. I mean, he can just build and build. He's ending the year on the, with the Pastor's Honor Roll, Citizenship Award, and a 99.45%. Samantha Adams. All right, this is, I'm calling this the Overall Academic Award. And you'll know at the end of it why. She's on the Pastor's Honor Roll, Citizenship Award, ending the year with 100%. Jesse Sadol. All right. Well, we're not quite finished yet. Jesse Sodo is, I've given him, now you already know, the overall academic award, Pastor's Honor Roll, Citizenship Award, ending the year with a 100%. Claire Weber. And I almost started to bring, I'm just going to do it this way, ladies. They tried to talk me into doing this a different way. They wanted to come up together. <laughs> I know, right? They're twins by choice. 
<laughs> In a moment, I'll bring Sydney up. You'll see what I'm saying. This is the Christian Testimony Award. What does that mean? That means they have the academics. They have Bible memory, right? But then there's the implementing it. And, and they, can, they have proven very helpful in the class, and they do what they say with the scripture. She's on the Pastor's Honor Roll, Citizenship Award, and ending the year with a 99.65. Remain standing. Cindy, Sydney is begging from her seat for me to. Sydney Moore, please stand. Come on up, Sid. She's like, please. These are twins by choice because we have twins in our class, but they are. Well, their parents know. They're just the best of friends. They're both getting the Christian Testimony Award, Pastor's Honor Roll, Citizenship Award, and ending the year with a 99.91% for Sydney. All right. Before I move on, I want to make sure, did everyone come up here? Did I miss anyone? At this time, I'd like for Mr. Kirchuk to come forward. We are going to award the certificate, um, the diplomas, and these are mock, meaning that your real diplomas are downstairs and safe in a folder, okay? <laughs> but this is picture time, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Samantha K. Adams. Judah Turan Barkley. Oh. Lucas Isaiah Brewer. Noah Isaiah Flood. No. <laughs> Kellen Ellis Henderson. <laughs> Nolan Emmett Henderson. Jackson Devan Jones. Oh. Bridget H. Lancaster. Juliet Noel Leper. Grayson Lee McQuinn. Sydney Deanna Moore. Tammy Loluwa Hana Omosoto. Good job. Beautiful. Alexander Taylor Carl Ramsey.
Luke Josiah Reed. Everly Marie Sandoval. Autumn Rowe Shelton. Jesse Ixasodo Claire Darling Genevieve Weber Boys and girls, could I get you up on the stage? Song. 